Hello and welcome to this Imagine Your Future Year 9 series. This is the second of a four part series. You may have already done part one, which was about looking at future jobs. These sessions have been put together to help you in your GCSE choices. My name is Susanna and I work as a WIM project officer and I'll be taking you through the session. All you'll need today is a pen and paper. So your GCSE choices are coming really soon. You may feel excited about this, you may feel daunted, or maybe a bit of both. I hope this session will help you feel more informed and in control of those choices. In this session, you'll consider how to make GCSE choices that are right for you, and we'll talk through some qualification levels available to you in your future. As I said in the first session, this is the first time that you can really start to try and take control of your education and make choices about some of the subjects you will study. And there are some basics to consider when thinking about how to make GCSE choices that are right for you. I'm going to run through those quickly now. So let's talk about the things you should be doing first, the do's. Do study a range of subjects. This can keep your options open for post-16 choices. Do choose subjects you enjoy. Most people get better grades than subjects they enjoy. Consider what you enjoy and why. Do talk to people who can give you advice and guidance. This might be a careers advisor or teacher, or could be a family member or friend. Do think about your future. If you're interested in a certain job, think about why and what subjects might help you. Okay, let's look at the don'ts now. Don't pick subjects because your friends are. It's your education and your journey. Don't choose a subject because you like the teacher. I know it's tempting, but that teacher might leave or change to teach something else. Don't choose a subject because you think it'll be easy. Focus on what you enjoy and remember that all subjects are planned to be challenging. When talking about choices in education, you may have seen and heard all sorts of language and words being used that don't always make sense. I'm going to explain a little to you now about qualifications and levels of study that will be available to you in the future. So you're along the bottom in the grassroots section at the moment about to choose your GCSE subjects. The next level in pink shows the choices that you can make after your GCSEs at post 16. This includes A-levels and B-techs. You can study these at sixth form or maybe at college. This is often referred to as further education. You could go on to study HNDs and HNCs, or at post 18 you may go straight to the top level and study at university or do a higher apprenticeship where you can study at degree level while working. This level is often referred to as higher education. There are lots of options available to you, depending on whether you're the sort of person who prefers to study in the classroom or enjoys more practical ways of gaining qualifications while working. It doesn't matter if you don't remember all this information, it just shows how many different options are avail available to you at different levels. Okay, so we've talked about the do's and don'ts to consider when making your choices and we've given you some information about qualifications. We're going to have a little quiz now that will hopefully bust a few GCSE myths. So grab a pen and paper and spend a minute reading through the questions and deciding on whether the answer is true or false. If you need more time, just pause it, but I'm going to go through the answers now. The first stage of exploring careers is choosing your GCSEs. The answer is false. This starts as soon as you're ready. It may be talking to a relative or friend or a careers advisor well before you choose your GCSEs. It could be at home or at school. Universities look at GCSE grades when deciding to offer you a place. This is true. 
Unis can look at GCSE grades if there is a lot of competition for a particular degree course that you're applying for, but it's not always the case. Stormzy achieved five A stars at GCSE. This is false. Stormzy actually achieved six A stars at GCSE. He's obviously someone who works really hard and he's shown that he values education. Recently in the media, um, it was talked about him funding several places for BAME students at Cambridge, which are one of the top universities in the UK. Maths, English and Science GCSEs are compulsory. True, yes they are. You'll have, cho you'll have choices on your other subjects, but those three everybody has to do. You have to take at least nine GCSEs. That's false. Nice, nine is the average number of GCSEs students study. Some of you may do more and some of you less, depending on your ability and circumstances. History is a humanities subject. True. It is, alongside RE and Geography. Taking Art GCSE is a good idea and it's an easy option. That's false. There's no such thing as an easy option. All courses are designed to challenge you. You should be guided by your interest and passion for that subject. And remember that all, all subjects are challenging. If you want to study medicine, you must take Biology GCSE. That's false. For medicine, the entry requirement are at least two science subjects at grade six, so chemistry and physics are fine too. Always do your research and find out for yourself what subjects are needed for certain jobs. You might be surprised. Okay, so let's finish up now with just a couple of questions. I want you to spend a moment thinking, what have you learnt today that could help you with your GCSE choices? And has anything surprised you? If there's, if there's someone around to talk to, maybe go and discuss this with them now. Talking to someone about things you find interesting or any worries you have is the first step of you taking control and making the right choices. Maybe have a chat with your parents, teacher or a careers advisor about anything you're interested in from today's session. Next session we'll be looking more into skills and how they link with your choices. Best of luck in your choices and thank you so much for taking part. If you want to find out anything more about what the WIN do, please visit our website. We have lots of useful information for on the student section and please follow us on social media on the links below.